Well, hello there. This is Z's Basket's first ever podcast. And welcome to my segment, Tea Chat with Z, where I'll be having tough and honest discussions about the beauty and complexity of everyday life with a different guest each week. I'm your host, Z, and today we're going to be talking about friendships. My guest today is my brother in law, Nali, and I have a list of questions, and we're going to be answering them based on our personal experience. And live opinions. Hi Nelly, welcome Hello, to my Z. podcast. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm happy to have you. Are you ready? I think so. You sure? <laughs> I think so. Not scared? <laughs> Just go ahead. <laughs> okay, let's go. Don't worry, first question, simple. Okay. Okay, what's your definition of a friend? <laughs> Friendship, friend. Um, yep. Growing up, we used to make friends in a, in a compound or in school or in the church and stuff like that. And we just call them friends, acquaintances, people that we probably meet as we grow along. But friendship begins to get defined as you go ahead in life. Um, so what used to be your friend when you were a kid becomes something or somebody you used to know not being a friend anymore. Um, you can define your friendship as you grow along. So as an adult, I would want to go by a particular definition because a lot of persons have various definitions um, for friendship. First of all, let's, let's look at where the name friend came from or what it actually means. So from my little knowledge, friend came or originated from the word fron. So fron is spelled F-R-O-N. Okay. And um, it meant to love. It meant to affiliate. It nice. meant, you know, to someone who feels concerned for some, some other person. So with that definition in my present day life, I could say that a friend is someone that has got affection, you, you or the person has got affection for each other. Friend is a link between two persons. What makes that person valuable to you? There must be something connecting you to someone for that person to be your friend. So it's not just seeing someone and saying, that person is my friend. No, there must be a link, an mm. affection, love, that drags you between I can't even be to you and the person. <laughs> deep. Oh, that's so deep. Okay. Wow. That's a very deep definition. Okay. What's the foundation of a good friendship? Right. <laughs> foundation. Yeah. Makes me to think about a house. And <laughs> well, I mean, with a friend, obviously, with friendship, you have to lay the foundation as well. Oh, so, all right. Yeah. I could, well, there are, there are basic foundations, I, I guess. Um, if you have a friend, the friend should have trust. Ooh, yep. Yeah? Yep. There should be some level of respect. Again, equality. Mm -hmm. This friend must be honest. Definitely. At the end of the day, you have a friend who's not honest, there's a problem, big one already. Yep. It's just like having a foundation and you're saying, oh, I'm going to, this side of the house is going to have the sitting room, so I'm going to dig deeper because we're going to be sitting down here. Uh, it's, a, it's a toilet, don't, don't dig too much. Don't dig, dig too much foundation here. I mean, friendship can be like that. Yeah. Because houses, when they are built, they are built on a strong a kind, foundation. A very good foundation. So your friendship must be based on some very strong ethics friendship should have good trust should have compassion we should have um honesty and then some level of independence as well yeah that's why i feel good foundation and friendship can be defined as wow i love all this you're really good at this well i i don't <laughs> want to say that for, for now <laughs> <laughs> you must have some really good friends okay mm. <laughs> don't worry yeah. let's go on it's getting deeper <laughs> What are the qualities you look for in a friend? Does race play a factor in choosing your friends? Good question. Um, 
so again, it's not far far fetched from those words I mentioned earlier. Foundation. As foundation. Okay. A good friend is dependable. Okay. A good friend can be called upon at any time, and he or she is there for you. Yeah. A good friend will not allow you to drown, irrespective of the situation at hand. Mm-hmm. A good friend will cry and laugh with you. Yep. There are loads of qualities I could, you know, bring from my head, you know, who a good friend is. Well, <laughs> and then the second part of your question that says... Um, race. Race. You see, this is where we have a problem in life. This is the exact... <laughs> <laughs> this is a sad challenge in this life. Ooh. Why? Why should we even bring race into yes. our friendship? Why? Yes. You know, Thank it's, you. it's 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 appalling. It's yep. It's not something that we should even think about. But it does, though. You see, and and those are the people that I say they have mental challenges. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm serious because you can't look at someone and say, "Oh, this person is black, so I can't be his friend because of his race." Oh, no, he's a white boy. I don't want to be friends with a white guy because he's, he's creepy. For heaven's sake. We, we are all people. We are human beings. We live in the same world. So Thank my you. friendship is not based on that, sweetheart. I think I just flow. When I see someone I connect with and he connects with me, I do not ask the second question. I just go into it straight. Yep. That's all I think definitely should matter because race shouldn't play a factor in anything no. at all. Definitely. I agree with that so very much. Thanks for that answer. How does someone who has social anxiety go about making friends? So you know how I have anxiety in general. Yeah. How would you how would you help me go about making friends? <sighs> That's a deep one, you know. Um, yeah. Because I have I am not socially anxious. So I may not speak from You're an extrovert. You're very extrovert. Yeah, well, you might say that because You, you... are. Oh my god. <laughs> you are definitely. You see, see, I probably answer this question from my past stories. When okay. I was growing up, I was the youngest in my class. I was a, probably the smallest as well. Okay. But then my facial composition had some challenges as a child. When I mean challenges, you know when someone comes to class and then he starts drawing your face on the on the board uh, or in the paper and say this is Nale? Yeah. And I felt really bad and I used to ask myself, why is my eyes like that? Why is my ears like that? It made me to shrink into myself as a child. Okay. Although I had a very wonderful parenting growing up mm-hmm. that exposed me to knowing and believing who I, I truly was. Yeah. I think that was what actually helped me. So if you say that you you need to find answers to someone who has got social and anxiety, yeah, I think the first steps is to believe who you are. Yeah, who am I? What makes me me? And it helps me because each time I came back crying, my dad used to say, "Young man, you are the youngest in that class. You are better than everyone there. If they were your age." They wouldn't do what you were doing. Yeah. So I think the first step is to make sure you understand yourself. Mm -hmm. Secondly, to make friends, you must keep eye contact, consciously keep eye contact with people when you meet them. I find that creepy. (laughs) No, it's not creepy. Because you have a challenge, you need to find some, you know, I mean, in my my view, and this is how I probably um, overcame that challenge. Okay. For me, when I go out and I'm, I'm sitting with people, I, I find it very difficult then to connect. So when people are talking, I, I look into their eyes to see genuity. Okay. Because that's the gift you have that the person who is not socially anxious does yeah. not have. Okay, that's a good one. No, no, but it's true. I mean, because I feel like I do make eye contact, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, I actually do. But for a short period of time, like, very little, and well, then I take my eyes off because yes. it makes me uncomfortable. Yes, and so, that's the thing. Yeah. So, you see, whether you make it in a short time for a long time, you've made eye contact. Okay. Eye contact, for me, gives you that level of trust okay. you want from the person. Yeah. Or the person you are giving to the person. 
Because sometimes, back, back then when we were in uni, they used to say that if a girl looks at you deep into your eyes, um, she means she likes you and, and stuff. But sometimes mm-hmm. it was true. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, um, you're my in-law, isn't it? Yeah, ask your sister. <laughs> actually, <laughs> <laughs> Another thing Z is you can you should smile at, at people when you are socially anxious. Yeah. Not smiling stupidly. Yeah, obviously. But, Creepy smile. But smile to give someone a chance to be able to say, How are you? I'm friendly, I'm open. Exactly. Come say hi. You need to do such things, you know. And yeah. and, and then be quick, be quick to actually introduce yourself so that you don't go into that that silent mood. Because that way, the person now understands. And trust me, people know when you're anxious. Yeah. They see it in you. Yeah. And if this person is interested in being your friend, they will immediately calm you down. Yep. That's how I have friends. Great. <laughs> so even though I don't have so much of an experience as I'm the social anxious person, yeah. I know because I have friends who are who were anxious that's and so I know how to get into them. That's good though. That's really good. Well, I I'm mean, gonna, I don't well, know if it's true. I mean, some other people should say that about me, but let me praise myself for for once in life. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it it is it is actually true because I feel like sometimes that's what helped me make the friends I have today. Because majority, of it's it has actually been on their part, them approaching me, not me actually approaching them. Because they're right. like, yeah, I just. Not necessarily put the wall up. I think because, you know, being bullied growing up then being older, it's kind of like I'm always so scared of being judged, especially when I used to try, like, go out and stuff. And I'm just like, okay, this isn't really my scene. I am bored. And then I have my headphones in and it's like, oh, you're being antisocial. You're being rude. And I didn't like that. So the best thing for me was just is, okay, you know what? I'm just going to stay home so I don't have to deal with this. See, sweetheart, trust me. I want you to believe in yourself, you know, and for everyone out there who is socially anxious, do not lock yourself indoors. It is just not right. For you to actually break that bond of being socially anxious, you need to get out there and make friends. You need to associate yourselves with some groups. If you can, it will help boost the the qualities you do not have and be open see one why people and i'm sorry to bring this up here in this program you see the challenges we have in the world today when it comes to suicide and stuff like that is because persons see themselves as not competent enough to deal with the challenges of life so they just think you know what the best thing to do is to take my life away you see we need to stop this we need to preach to those who are socially anxious to come out. And those of us who are not should actually create an environment where people can talk to us. Because it's a gift. It is a gift. And the, see, the way this world is created, we are there to support each other. That's what friendship is. a support system. Yeah. So please, if you used to lock yourself um, in your house and say, you know what, I don't really fit in. Sweetheart, you fit into a lot of things. You may not be as good as Mr. A, but certainly... You are good for this world. That's why you are a salt. Yeah, I get, I really like that. I mean, I agree with the part where you said the community, because that's what I do. I try and look for, like, communities for me to get into. That's okay, you know, kind of get to put myself out there yeah. so I can meet new people yeah. and then be engaged. I really like that, and engaging with, you know, other people besides myself or the friends I already have. So I really yeah. that's really good advice. I like that. Thanks for that. You're welcome. What are the different types of friends you have? You see, I don't know. When they say different types of friends, well, you could say it could be zoned, truly. People have friends for business, friends for this and that and that. Yeah. So I've got I've got loads of friends, like you know already. Um But in general, I keep my friends for the benefit of gaining what we gain from each other. Okay. And there are friends who are my ride and die. I don't, 
no matter what happens within me and these guys or me and these ladies, we are just friends. We we can't push it out of or out of context, sort of. So I could say I've got, and you see, this is where the the, the other definition comes in, which I I, I didn't think it would come up, but I'll just <laughs> I'll just give it to you. Um, you know, people people differentiate friendship and acquaintances. Yeah. But, but you see, sometimes some of these acquaintances are actually friends. friends yep. Because the, the, the ingredients that makes a friend a friend is actually found in these acquaintances. Yeah. And most times they already call you a friend. Yeah, that's awkward. You see, so it's quite awkward. So when you say <laughs> different types of friends, I would want to, I beg to disagree from the the general view of breaking friends into, into types. Into categories. Yes. I just feel a friend is someone who could go that extra mile. But people have friendships for pleasure, friendships for, you know, um, in fact, for all, type of, all manner of things. Yeah. But I don't want to go that way. I think the friends I have, I have for reasons that are mutually um, beneficial. Accept, are beneficial and acceptable to the, yeah. to the parties. Oh, I like that. How many good friends can you count on one hand? Oh, I don't have enough fingers to count my good friends. That's really... Oh, my God. So, it's like more than 10. More than 10. That's really good. Yeah, and I, and I think it's the same thing. It comes to trust. You you don't... Friend, people people say... <laughs> and this is That's where, so, I'm so jealous right now. No, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't... I am. Um, I definitely no, am. <laughs> you know what? Come get what I told you about me growing up. I used to be... I used to feel I was awkward. I used yeah. to feel like... I was challenged in some way. And even though you are challenged in any way, you know, anybody out there listening to us right now, even though they were challenged in any way, doesn't stop you from having friends and good ones for that matter. But as I grew older, I understood that I had a quality. And the quality I, I had, or I still have, is that I could go an extra mile yeah. to do as much as I want to do for anyone. Yeah. Now, because I kept doing this over the years, most of my friends have become stuck. Yeah. Like, they just feel that they owe me so much. Yeah. This guy has been there almost every time when we need him. Yeah. So, maybe my type of friendship is that I have made it so much that they are now stuck. They don't have a reason to leave. And when they leave, they are the ones who lose. So, the loyalty. So, yeah. The loyalty is there. And the funny thing is, it's not like I don't, I don't gain from them. Or if they leave, I wouldn't lose. It's just because I have built that wall around my own foundation to say, if I'm making this friend, I have to make this friend someone that if he leaves, so around she loyalty. Leaves, yeah, she's going to be scared of losing me. He's going to be scared of losing me. And same as I. How very fast and furious of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could call me one of them, guys. <laughs> very fast and furious. Okay. Have you ever been someone's friend and realized... You weren't their friend. Yes, a couple of times. Mm. Yeah, see, so I'm not that different, innit? <laughs> a couple of times, I uh, had this friend, and I'll use an example. You know, I just pray the person never listens to this podcast. They like, <laughs> the like. they will know they're the ones I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's shining the light, and they would do better. So oh, well, yeah, true, they would do true, better. They would true. learn from that. True. And be like, okay, I need to pay attention to the people in my life. Yeah. So truly, they should, they, I think truly, it's it should. This program should be like um, a therapy for them. Because, um, <laughs> actually, this friend of mine. Yeah. Or this supposedly person, I used to call quote the unquote my friend. friend. Yeah, I used to call him my <laughs> friend. And every time, every time anything successful comes up in my life. I see how the person downplays it. Wow. It downplays it in a way that even myself, who is successful, begin to ask myself, is this actually the success? Yeah. And at the time, I realized that when I share the same things with other persons that are not as deeply friendly to me as that person, or with me as that person, yeah. they, they blow it into an out of proportion, and they're happy, and they're celebrating it. So one day... I, I thought about it, I said, wait, it's the same thing I told this person. Mm -hmm. How come he's always repeating this same challenge every other time, coming up with excuses why 
this and that is not great. And it made me feel really, really bad. And that's how I deactivated myself from him. And trust me again, a lot of others have come after this person. And I have picked up that cue to always just detach myself ASAP. So no matter how far or how rich that person wants to be, I need to see some basic foundations, like your some uh, growth, you know, some yeah, some fundamental pillars, yeah, that makes me the me and makes you the you, yeah. so that we can actually you know be mutually attached or beneficial to each other. That's very good. I like that. What do you do when different personalities in friendship clash? What are the pros and cons of being friends with a different personality than yours? The question also, again, coins me into the zone of inferiority and superiority complex. Because when you talk about personality, yeah, um, people look at you and say, this person is too inferior for me to, to, to be a friend with this person, or it's too superior for me. You know, there, this, it comes up when you're having, you know, that understanding of a friend. Yeah. I don't know, but if I meet someone today and I see that he talks so much, I want to listen to the content of what he's saying. If it makes sense, and I can bear with it, fine. There must be something that makes me agree. So when it comes to personalities in friendship, it's just based on the level of stupidity you can take, the so, level of wisdom you can take, and the accommodation of that person in your life. So there shouldn't be any pros and cons. I don't that. think there should be. If, okay. If if you do not agree with the the speed at which the friendship is coming, have you seen people come into your life as friends? They pack their baggages into your life. <laughs> they come with their left hand, right hand, left leg, and they jump in fast. When others crawl, you know, and, and that's that's the thing about friendship. Most persons like it when somebody just jumps into their life. There are people like that. I like that. Actually. You like that, right? <laughs> yeah. Great. Wait for some type of persons that you've not seen. When they jump in, they jump in with their full clan. The whole village is with you as friends. <laughs> because I have something to work with. All that... oh, right, I see. <laughs> yeah. I see for most of us who probably have so many friends. I have something to work with. Great. But if you don't bring that with me, then I'm just like, okay, what are we doing? So that's the thing. It, de it depends on people. Yeah. It depends on who. Can you imagine having a friend who's a, a drug addict? Eh? Oh, God. Yeah, you see, you see, but there are. I've got friends like that, you know. I've got, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've okay, got friends maybe. who are. Not anymore. Not anymore. I still have friends who are addicts. And I still, I, I try. I try a lot. You see, and that's the thing. I don't keep friends because they are too good. I keep friends on the street. Friends who can, when you shout out there, they are there to help you ASAP. Yeah. You know, I live in Lancaster, right? Mm -hmm. And there is this aspect of Lancaster called Morecambe. Yeah. Morecambe has got some very peculiar people. Children are starving. Parents are starving. You could see a lot of things happening in that zone. Where I come from initially in Nigeria, you could call it like um, the ghetto aspect of some particular towns like Lagos. Okay. But it's not like they are that bad. It's just that people, some of them do not care. People don't care about them. So I've, I've got this couple of friends in Morecambe and I go to them. I give them money. I give them food. And they're my friends. When, when, I see, when people see me with them... They think, wait, what's the correlation between you and this person? The reason why I have those kind of friends is because I help them. They, are, they, are, they look at me as their light. Yeah. They want to come out of it. And so imagine, if you're not a friend to someone who is an addict, how can you bring a person out of addiction? Yeah. Do you understand me, Z? Yeah. So this is the reasons why I say, sometimes it's about inferiority and, and, and superiority complex. complex. But if you are able to kill that aspect in your life, you are able to accommodate and deal with that whole persona challenge. Because it is a challenge when you begin to do that in yeah. friendship. Okay. How do you deal with changes that arise in friendships? Like marriages and kids. Well, you're married and you have kids. Exactly. So, oh God. I mean, 
Oh God, this question is very, is timely. Just a few days ago, I was telling my wife that, do you know that this person has been my friend for X, Y amount of years? Yeah. And all of a sudden, this person has withdrawn. And I tried to speak to the person a few days ago, and I could imagine the kind of answers she was giving to me. Yeah. Like, oh, you got married, you're a big boy now, you don't care about us, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And I felt like, okay, I thought we were friends. Yeah. You should be happy that I progressed. Mm -hmm. Now, what I what I felt from the conversation was that she, she thought because I got married, there was no reason to contact me. Yeah. You see, changes arise in friendship and you must deal with it. Mm-hmm. There is this proverb that says, when a poor, when two poor friends are together and one becomes rich all of a sudden, the poor one is either going to be a friend to the rich or an, enemy. or an enemy to the rich. And then the rich one has to also understand that when before he became rich, there was a poor friend. Yeah. So it's either you're going to take your poor friend along or you're going to leave. So there are two ways. You see, Z, changes will arise and you have to deal with it now you ask me how do i deal with it yeah i try to make everyone around me that i call a friend as comfortable as possible where the person do not agree with my ethics x x factor you are fired <laughs> out <laughs> do not come and corrupt my life i'm trying to build you know if a friend does not rejoice with you when you you know, you're successful and you move yeah. up the ladder. That is not a friend. That's not a friend. And as friends, when you grow, you pull each other along. You mm -hmm. want to see yourself in that same space. In fact, if you have a friend, Z, if you have a friend who's doing so well and he's not asking you how you want to meet up with him or her, Z, run. Run <laughs> as fast as your leg can take you. That's not a friend. Yeah. Friends pull each other along. Yep. Trust me. I tell you this last, this last, you know I'm a politician. Yeah. One day, I saw a friend on the street. And I stopped. I parked my car. I went to him. And he looked at me like, is this you? Is this actually you? You know that kind of thing you watch yeah. in, in movies? And we're laughing. We're just laughing about it. Trust me. I knew I could understand his, his challenges. Yeah. We left school together. Studied something in theater arts. He wanted to get into the movie industry. He did not. Mm -hmm. I, on the other hand, studied other courses. I went ahead in life to work. And somehow, I could say I was successful at the time I met him. Yeah. I mean, today, he's, he's all right. He's doing good. Yeah, okay. But imagine me seeing him and passing and just saying, well, he's not in my class anymore. Yeah. You don't know what the future holds. Yeah. So I deal with such things like straight, straight ahead by just making... You know, that eye contact, that personal experience, listen to them, try and see where I can help, try and drag them along and say, you can do this, you can do that. E encourage them. Yeah. And it, I think it makes me feel good as, as well. And mm -hmm. as well, makes the other person feel good. And they just feel, that guy, is, he, he cares. Yeah. Even though sometimes we don't really care, but you don't want to be in that, that spotlight, <laughs> isn't it? You know? <laughs> but these are the, yeah, but it's true. Some persons <laughs> don't really care. They just want to say, you know what? If I don't ask, it's to be as if, I, you I don't, don't care. Don't care. Yeah. Well, so. The best thing in friendship is to always ask. Always ask. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. How do you avoid having a father sister relationship with your friend when there's an older, younger relationship? Um, <laughs> great. There are friends that are like my fathers. Yeah. Truly. There are friends that are like my sister. I don't try to avoid it, Z. I'm sorry. At this question, I don't know if I have to say yes, I avoid or not. But really, I don't. Have, I don't. I don't try to keep. If if my friend, who is my mate, thinks he's my dad, chief, please be my dad. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. Who doesn't want a dad? Don't you want a dad? <laughs> I mean, if a if a friend who's a girl thinks she's my mom, bring it on, mom. Bring it on. Give me, give me the food. Give me everything. Yeah. You know, we all have, you know, various abilities. And yeah. I don't actually try to avoid people who want to show me what they think they have. I just select the kind of... Their way of caring, yes, basically. They, are, they convert into that. So if yeah. I ask you as my my um, presenter or 
I don't know why I'm going to give you as a name now. <laughs> the, if you want, if I ask you um, that question, this same question you asked yeah. me now, don't you love the relationship you keep with your sister, your brother, your dad, your mom? If it's a good one, wouldn't you like it to continue? Not necessarily, because I've had that kind of situation where I had a disagreement with one of my best friends, where I'm, I'm always, she always had that talking down to me, almost like, you know, my mom would, and I'm just like, I already have a mom. If I have more than one mom, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, <laughs> oh, I see the in-depth of your good. question. Just, I see the in-depth of your you question. Know, I don't need that. I have a sister, more than one. <laughs> don't need that. <laughs> right, right. Okay, just be my friend, you know. You don't have to feel like you're lording over me because you're older. You know what I mean? So, so it kind of gives it... She has that way... I mean, she's, she's such a caring person and I love her for that. But at the same time, she has this... Is I don't want to say superior, but it's almost that way of saying... Oh, I'm just telling you if you want to better your life. And I'm like, but well, it's not like... Right. So, Z, you see, see where, this is where everybody is different, isn't it? Yeah. So, this person is probably It's coming from saying, a good place. Yes, yeah, it's it definitely from coming from a good place. But I think the delivery of it is where it always Thank you. Wrong. That's where I wanted to go to. Yeah. Sometimes people don't know how to deliver. understand the person who you are delivering Boundaries. the message to. You know, I'm somebody who, if you come to me and ask me a question, I would want to deliver such answers in a calm and corny way. Yeah. But again, you see, we all have different ways and abilities to absorb things. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, your, you know your sister. Your sister is one person who I still, I'm, I'm, I won't say I, I know her 100%, even if yeah. she's my wife. Mm-hmm. I still, I'm still learning a lot about her. Sometimes she gets so excited. And I'm wondering, <laughs> why are you even excited, though? What's the basis for this excitement? It's beyond normal. And I can't, I can't still, I can't still fathom why. Yeah. And you see, friendship is about absorbing some of these kind of attitudes um, that, that, that props up. Like for you, I know that it's a delicate challenge where you want to filter what people say to you. Yeah. The words that they use. Sometimes I don't really care. I don't even know the difference between the words. You know, <laughs> you see, yeah. that's the funny thing. So we all have, and that's where that's where you can you draw your curtains. For me, I don't like I said earlier. I don't really think there's a challenge with that. Yeah, I would want to keep a a daddy friend. Or more, when you shout, you'll be tired, didn't it? You, oh God, you'll be tired. I'm using all these words. I'm sorry, but <laughs> your audience in you Nigeria, that's <laughs> come out like yeah. you. <laughs> you exactly. Look, you will be tired. You will find out me. I'll give you the exact challenge I give to my dad. <laughs> You will challenge me as a Good mom. Good luck. I will. Yeah, exactly. So you actually have to just come down to my level. Or we have, we separate our ways. Mm. If you're not accommodating as a friend, there's no need being there. You to be toxic. I don't know if I'm making any sense to you. Though, but that's no, you definitely, you, um, you definitely are. That's so good. Because I feel like, for me, I just want you to be my friend. You know, I don't need you. I don't want it to be like you're lording over me because already I have, you know, I have that. Especially when it might feel, okay, maybe the relationship I have with those people might not be good probably at that time. It's a feel very triggering to me. I understand. So it's like, okay, just right now, my yeah. friend, that's yeah. what I want. Yeah. And when those delivery, I mean, it's, it's not something that she does in a malicious way mm-hmm. but she doesn't know and so sometimes I have to tell her and I'm like exactly. you know what okay right now I actually need space from you that exactly. I can't you know exactly. I can't deal with so I mean she's an understandable person so and she respects that this is one thing I love so she knows okay how do you feel when she says something to me she's like I didn't Minute upset already. you did I or yeah. I wasn't too harsh or I wasn't yeah, an, yeah I mean she says what she says when it's the right moment, but all that way you have to be real and strong with your friend, which is okay. But apart from that, I'm just like, yeah, let's just keep it leveled. <laughs> <laughs> let's just keep it equal. And then, you, you, know. need, you need to open up sometimes to your friends. They need to know where it pains you and 
when it's sweet for you. Yeah, because I mean that's where the communication comes in. I'm not yeah. saying baby me. No. And you know, but I'm saying be real, but at the same time, watch your delivery about True. that. True. I think it's about sensitivity. Z. Yeah, exactly. And do you do you think I might be a, be a little too sensitive, but well, we all have that level of sensitivity. Yeah. There are aspects of my life that I could touch. I will go from a good boy I am to a monster. <laughs> And your, your sister has, we, we all have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah, all yeah. have that. Don't so. go that aspect of my life. I don't like anybody going there. And we all have that. So it's a level of sense. People should know. Your friends should know. Imagine if they don't, they didn't know. Yeah. It becomes awkward. But that's where you should filter the level of information you have, you've done out. Have you communicated enough to this person? Yep. Friendship is weird sometimes. <laughs> Again, it's very enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is so fun I'm enjoying this so very much so so much thank you thank you for joining us on Z's Baskets podcast that concludes part one on the discussion of friendships with Nali love what you had so far you can find me on Spotify YouTube Instagram and Z's Baskets website don't forget to hit the subscribe Follow or sign up button so you don't miss an episode.